Welcome to another edition of the Knights Baseball Roundup. This is the second week we'll be doing it. And, uh, of course, joined, as always, by the baseball head coach, Gary Puccio. Gary, how you doing? All right. How you doing, Ryan? I'm, I'm good. Tired, hungry. But um, we're going to do this. I got some chicken in the office. I smelled it, so oh, okay. I, it's like, let's not get into it right now. Okay, okay so let's start with, uh, speaking of food, we've got the first pitch dinner. Uh, just happened on Sunday. And uh, run us down how successful it was. How, uh, how was the night? I thought it went fairly well. We had uh, right around 170 people there, which was a very good turnout, especially considering we have 22 players this year. Every kid usually sells five tickets. We usually have a 27-man roster, so that would have been another 25 to 30 people. So, you know, hopefully next year we hit 200, which would be really nice. But I thought the evening went well. The speakers were outstanding. Uh, John Bittman, Frank Gilbert, Steve Dombowski, and Joe Rigoli. I just thought it was a, a very good night. It really worked out pretty well. All right, good. Good to hear. Um, and let's move into the opening weekend. Uh, three games, the Davidson tournament, I guess, lack of a better term, but a, a round robin, you said. Right. Two against Lehigh, one against Davidson. Um, let's talk about the first game. Davidson dropping it 4-2, to two, but Logan Fratty got the first pitch um, and pitched pretty well against a really good team. I thought he did a real nice job. Uh, we had a kind of cross up in the bottom of six, which led to the go ahead run scoring where Logan and Zach kind of got crisscrossed on a pitch and the ball went by with a man on third, which is not the way you want to give up the go ahead run. But in general, I thought we played well. We didn't hit as good as I would have liked. But Logan's pitch and performance was definitely outstanding against a quality team. I think Davidson ranked 52 coming into the game. So we were right there. I mean, we were right there 2 2 in the seventh. So. Uh, second game was the first two against Lehigh. Another same identical score line. Um, nine men left on base is the biggest detraction to take away from the game. And just talk about, I mean, Joel Roman had a great game offensively, three for four, um, but a couple crucial double plays and, and bad times. Let's talk about that game. Yeah, we, even more so, which doesn't show up in the box score, was we, we did a real lousy job of base running. We had uh, we killed two of our own rallies with base running mistakes in innings that we scored, and obviously you can't be doing that. One of them was a fresh mistake, and you kind of live with those because they're just learning. Uh, it's just a different level than what they're used to playing. But we definitely, I was not happy with that loss. Uh, Lehigh played well, they deserved the win. They, they scored four runs in one inning against Brendan. The rest of the game they had three hits the whole rest of the game. So. You know, Brendan has to start getting out of that inning, too, for us. He has to become the dominant pitcher he should be and and get us out of that inning at, you know, 2 nothing instead of 4 nothing. And that, I felt that was one of the issues. And then, again, we got behind. We started to play a little panic on the base run, on the base pass, which was unexplainable, except that we've been inside. So I guess it kind of goes with the territory that you haven't been outside. You really haven't had a chance to work on that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't happy with our part of that loss as far as the offense. I felt we should have had more than two runs, and basically I felt it was our base running that definitely hurt us. I think we had 11 hits in that game. Mm -hmm. So did. to come out with two runs, is, you know, you're doing something wrong when you get 11 hits. That happens though, and I mean, you know, it's a three game weekend, uh, and the final game was a good way to end it uh, against Lehigh. Seven to five victory. Eric Snyder became the all time uh, career record holder for saves, got his 17th. Joe Flack, the freshman, got his first start. Um, John Jacks went 3-for-3 three three from the plate, had a great weekend. So I think there's definitely a lot of good things to take away from the third game, at least, and, and leave the weekend with. Yeah, the third game, even more so that, you know, we, we kind of preach team offense, and it's about moving runners over and getting runners in. And, and that game we had, I know at least two times, we had man on second with no out, where we hit the ball on the right side, moved the guy to third. I know we had two sacrifice flies in that game. We had three successful sacrifice bunts. So we played the kind of baseball that FDU has to play to be successful. And, and that's one of the things that we had talked about that night before because of the base run mistakes and everything in game two, that, that we had to go out and play a clean game. That was my big thing as far as on the offense. Defensively, we didn't make an error the whole weekend. I mean, coming out of a gym and to play three games 
outside and not make one miscue on defense. It was outstanding. But but I felt offensively we progressed a lot that third game and into the kind of team we have to be. Move a runner over, get a runner in, you know, do those little things that helps your team win. And that that was big in that game. And uh, you know, Joe Flack did a pretty decent job in his first start. He he ended up coming up lame on me with uh, he was getting some leg cramps, so he, that's why we had to pull him. And Joe Borelli came in and, and did a real nice job for us. Pitched three innings. I think he gave up uh, the two runs that gave them the lead, but then settled down and just shut them down for the next three innings, which was big because it got us to seven, eight, nine. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of my things here, the year we went to play, was seven, eight, nine was twenty-one and two when tied or with the lead, and they're one and zero this year. So hopefully they're back to being what they were. And of course Snyder becoming, you know, Snyder is very special to me in the. Time I've had Snyder, he's been involved in 50% of my wins, so either with a saver or a W. So he, when I give him the ball, I feel pretty confident that we're in good shape. It's a good statistic. Um, all right, well, the opening weekend, I know there's a, a very long season ahead. Um, you did mention, I think, in every game, pretty much, you were noting how good the defense has been. Um, are you surprised at how good the defense has been so early in the season, right away? You know, yes and no, because obviously it's something I emphasize, and we we do stress that. Like, defense is a big part of how I like to run a team and how, how I believe a team can be successful. I think what surprised me maybe a little bit was how well the freshman guys stepped up. I mean, Matt McCann played absolutely phenomenal at shortstop all week. He made two or three outstanding plays, not in addition to just making it an everyday play. And, and, you know, when you're a freshman and a ball gets ripped at you right away, mm -hmm. you know, it's a new, new level for you. Zach Tommy behind the plate, first two guys to try to steal against him, boom, both out. So uh, those are very big positive signs for us going forward as far as uh, two big freshmen who are going to be a big part of our defense mm -hmm. showing it, that they understood that. So, yeah, I, I, and, and of course, I, I know you know I say this all the time, but you know Shane made one of Shane's standard driving right. ex exceptional catches. With, so there was a lot of positives to take from the defense. There really were. Okay. Great, and uh, this upcoming weekend is not a tournament. It is a three-game set against Moorhead State in Kentucky. Right. Um, it's kind of random, I feel like. Right. Middle of the country. Right. Nowhere near the Northeast. Middle of nowhere. And you can't avoid, apparently, the cold weather? Apparently, apparently not. You tell me the weather is terrible? the temperature is going to be 35-ish, uh, so oh. not, looking, uh, not looking too good as far as the temperature. We just left. <laughs> Davidson was 68 and sunny and oh, 70 man. on the last day, so it was three gorgeous days, too, which probably helped us play well, too. Yeah, I'm sure Lehigh appreciated that, too. Yes, I'm um, sure. Right. Well, give us a little preview of Moorhead State coming up. That's next weekend, three games set. Um, as you said, it's kind of a random team. What happens this time of year is you kind of match up based on who has openings when, mm -hmm. and obviously you have to go south to play this time of year. But I, mean, I don't believe uh, 32 degrees is normal temperature down there this no. time of year for them either, so it's going to be a little little uh, cold shock for them also. But the coach from Warren State's guy named Mike McGuire, who I know back from when I was the coach at Briarcliff and he was the coach at Lewisburg. So we play each other back in those days, and that's how come we're, uh, we decided to play them this year. So we'll see how it goes. All right, Coach, that's all the questions I have. Um, thank you for taking the time out to talk with us here on the Knights Baseball Roundup again. Appreciate it. Thank you, Ryan. Good luck this weekend. Appreciate that, too. Hopefully uh, we'll figure out a way to stay warm. Yeah. Uh, wish you the best of luck down in Kentucky. Um, and Knights viewers, thank you for watching another edition of the Knights Baseball Roundup. At FD Knights on Twitter and FDUnites.com is your hub for all FD uh, sports information, baseball, stats, stories, everything you need. And coming up after the jump, we will have Corbin Gapsky with Logan Fratty for an interview with uh, the first pitch winner, uh, first pitcher of the season for the Knights. Thanks for watching. <laughs>Thank you, Ryan. On this second half of the Knights Baseball Roundup, I'm here with sophomore pitcher Logan Fratty. Logan, first I have to ask you about the first pitch at dinner. Uh, what was the atmosphere like and the overall evening? Uh, overall, the atmosphere at the dinner was great. Um, it was really nice seeing the 60s team, the all 60s all-decade team honored. Uh, that was really cool. Um, the speakers did a great job, I thought, uh, engaging the audience and really, really bringing people in to understand what the what the family here is like at uh, Knights Baseball. 
And the reason why I'm asking you about the first pitch dinner is you were honored with the first pitch ball, which means you threw out the first pitch of the season, and you threw that first game of the season against Davidson. So before we talk about Davidson, let's talk about being honored with the first pitch ball. What was it like? What would the family talk about afterwards? Had to be a great evening for the Friday family. Yeah, yeah, it was great, especially because um, it, it was so unexpected. I really had no idea that uh, I was going to get honored with the ball. And, you know, John Bittman does such – such great things with this program and it was just it was really such an honor to receive the ball from him and coach and to show their faith in me to be the, the starting pitcher for the first game of the season as well deserved so let's talk about that first start it was against Davidson they're a member of the Southern Conference and you went six innings and we gave up two earned runs so you put in a quality start for the Knights you were, were charged with a loss but let's talk about that start what was working for you what wasn't working if there was anything and what you can improve upon for your next start against Moorhead State Right, I think it was a pretty good start coming out uh, for the first time. Um, fastball was pretty good. Uh, Changeup was working as it usually does, and uh, my slider especially was working really well. Um, couldn't really find my curveball, and I wasn't as consistent as I would have liked to be, so those are definitely two things I'd like to work on for the future. But overall, I think myself, my pitching performance was pretty good for the first time out coming out of the gym. And uh, I have to give my hat, tip my hat to the defense. The defense really played very well behind me, especially considering how tough it's been not being able to get outside recently. That's great. And I also had to talk to you about your, your strengths in the past. I mean, you had a great season last year for the Knights. You're one of the, the bright spots for the Knights, especially pitching in that 16-inning game against Wagner. Um, so you have some bright spots. So what have you carried on from last year's mentality to go into this year that's helped you so far as a pitcher of the Knights? Right. Well, the experience I got from last year is basically just uh, staying comfortable, staying confident on the mound, knowing that I belong here and that I can really have success here if I do everything that I know how to do and stay within myself and, and, and uh, play on my strengths and, and start to improve my weaknesses. I know that I can have success in this conference. Well, your next start is going to be against Moorhead State down Kentucky. So. How do you feel about going out in Kentucky? I heard the weather down there is like a frozen tundra. Yeah, uh, unfortunately the weather is probably not going to be on our side like it was last weekend, but uh, I'm really excited. I can't wait for this week to go by and finally get down there to play, and I know the rest of the team's feeling the same way. Uh, there's a lot to build on from this, from this weekend, and I know we can improve and hopefully come away with more than one win this time. How much of a difference is going from Teaneck, New Jersey, or Hackensack, New Jersey, from Davidson, and then going down to Kentucky? Is How much of a hour difference is there? Is there any... This is going to be a long road trip. Honestly, they're actually the same amount uh, hours-wise. So um, it's, it's kind of, you know, we're used to that from, from this last trip and from last year. So I, I don't really see it being as a pro uh, much of a problem. And especially considering the weather we've had up here in Teaneck, uh, I think we'll be prepared for the, for the cold we're going to meet down there. Okay, Logan, before I let you go, i got to ask you one personal question. You're a big fan of Mighty Python. So <laughs> I have to ask you, which one of your favorite quotes? And can you give it back to the fans? what it is oh man that's uh that's a tough one putting me on the spot like that but uh I guess I'd have to say in the beginning when the uh the two guys are up on the castle talking about uh <laughs> are you suggesting coconuts mug right <laughs> and that whole thing <laughs> well there you have folks uh Logan's favorite quote so fans watch Logan this weekend down in Kentucky against Moorhead State and tune in to fdunites.com for live stats recaps and videos but also watch Knights baseball run up every week with Ryan Newick and I other than that, have a great day.